You know, one of the things I love about doing this job, one of the things I love about this channel, being able to discuss cases and bring my own amazing knowledge to the table, is the fact that time and time again, I'm proven right. And for those of you who are thinking of instances where I was wrong, and I haven't corrected those instances, throw them in the comments, I will correct them in the future, but just know this, even the wrong thing that I said in the past is actually correct, and also my correction correcting that wrong thing will also be correct. But one of the things that I did call relates to the Jose Alba case, and a recent development, as published by the New York Post, shows exactly what I argued previously in a video about how just because the charges would be dropped, or just because Alba at that point in time could have beaten the charges in court, doesn't mean he's not vulnerable to a civil suit. Well, that day has come, the civil suit has been filed, and we're going to go over this because the attacker's family is now claiming damages, and he might end up wiping out the store based on the fact that the attacker attacked Alba. But before we get into this objectively nonsensical lawsuit, before we discuss the crazy claims being put forward by the attacker's family in this situation, which by the way, might result in them getting paid off of it, we have a sponsor of today's video because I need to get paid, so I'm going to toss it to the sponsor, one-handed toss that time, bring it back over here, and then talk about it on the other side. Noble Gold CEO Colin Bloom believes that the quantitative tightening that we're seeing from the Fed is actually setting the stage for a gold rally. Sure, in the short term, this will increase the power of the dollar. However, by the time we get around to next year, the Fed is going to want to restart the economy, and the only method that they have is printing more money and injecting it into the system. This means you better be hanging on to something that is hedging against the value of the dollar. Now, if you're thinking about gold and silver as your hedge, I definitely recommend you go over to noblegoldinvestments.com or you call and talk to one of their experts at 877-646-5347. And if you decide to set up a qualifying IRA or 401k with them, you will be gifted an American Eagle one-tenth of an ounce gold coin. That's 877-646-5347 or noblegoldinvestments.com. Now, for those of you who need a quick refresher on the case that we're going to be talking about. This, of course, involves the incident with bodega worker Jose Alba. Jose Alba was just minding his business when all of a sudden, a woman decided to come in and use an EBT card for what amounted to be around a $3 transaction. Now, I had talked about at the time how Alba was quite polite to this woman, despite the fact that her card wasn't working. Now, of course, she decided to become very belligerent. She decided to attack Alba. Alba, and she decided that it would be a good result in this situation for her to bring her boyfriend, 35-year-old Austin Simon, in order to physically harm the man because she didn't have enough money on her EBT card. And for those of you who need a little refresher on that footage, I will play you Alba saying that the card isn't working, even though from what I can detect from this situation, it appears like she just didn't have the money and he was trying not to embarrass her in public. Now, for those of you who are a bit confused on the descriptor of this being an EBT debit card or an EBT card, just know that this is a benefits card from the government, commonly referred to as food stamps, that is just on a debit card that you can use at stores like bodegas or grocery stores in order to buy certain types of food. So this woman was doing this with taxpayer money or a taxpayer given to her card, possibly due to the fact that she has a child. I know people that are on these benefits. They get more benefits because they have children. Some of them are really good people, but unfortunately, in situations like this, we see the entitlement and the nasty behavior of some of the people that are being promoted and supported by our government. So your tax dollars help finance this situation, help finance this woman's lifestyle, and this is how she rewards you when she gets declined because she doesn't know how much money is on her card because she doesn't have 
three dollars in cash to cover the transaction that she's trying to run through on this card so of course as we know she called austin simon oh you have the i think you have i think you know oh you have the that's not my fault. You're not working. That's not my fault. You're not working. Oh, shit. Can I get in my free? The machine is not working. The, the, the car is not working. What the fucking shit? She knows her money. The paper, he's saying, no her money. Austin Simon came in with the fury, immediately started screaming at Alba. Alba said he didn't want any problem. He was trying to de-escalate the situation. Note the body language of Alba. Come on, come out. Papa, look, look, Papa. Come on, Papa, look. Come on, come out. Come on, come out. Papa, what's up with you? I don't want a problem, Papa. Nigga, what's wrong with you? I know doing nothing wrong, nigga. Why you snatch anything I And Austin proceeded to get behind the counter. And I can't really show you this because, you know, YouTube's terms of service. But Austin pushed Alba, who is 61 years old. Austin is 35 years old. By the way, was out of jail after assaulting a police officer. So criminal, just so you know. And then he grabbed him by the shirt to drag him out front. And Alba ended up grabbing a knife that they used to open boxes. And he stabbed him a bunch of times. And Austin ended up dying from this situation. Now, a lot of people look at this and call this self-defense. A lot of people look at this and point out that the woman started this situation, that Austin was wildly inappropriate, and that Austin is not entitled to come back 10 minutes after hearing an argument occurred and attacking a 61-year-old man. However, the district attorney, who is a woke district attorney out of Manhattan, decided that this would be a case that it would be good to charge Alba, the person who defended himself on video, with murder. He tried to hold him on a half a million dollar bond. That was reduced to $250,000. They tried raising money. GoFundMe cut off their campaign. And this became a giant situation in the city of New York, especially when you consider the fact that the woman in question who started this whole altercation, who stabbed Alba multiple times, wounds that Alba actually had get infected while he was in Rikers Island, wasn't facing any charges. Because according to Alvin Bragg's theory of the prosecution, Jose Alba, the man who is attacked behind the counter by somebody who was much larger than him by somebody who was 30 years younger than him actually should have set everything aside and challenged Austin to a single combat one-on-one -on -one hand to hand duel and when he escalated to using the knife that was just wildly disproportionate force that's insane how could he do that he should just take the beating because obviously Austin and his girlfriend are entitled to attack him because they didn't have enough money on their government benefits card in order to cover a $3 transaction. On top of that, the girlfriend, after the situation escalated to deadly force, was fully within her rights to stab the 61-year-old man because the 61-year-old man actually escalated the situation to a deadly situation. Obviously, there was outrage. Obviously, people were angry. And eventually, this led to the charges being dropped in this situation because even somebody like Bragg, who was obviously there to protect the criminals and not protect the good citizens of New York, couldn't withstand the political pressure. Now, I talked about on my channel how it wasn't going to be over for Alba if the charges were dropped. It wasn't going to be over for Alba if he ended up beating the charges in court because what ultimately will end up happening because New York does not have adequate self-defense laws is there would possibly be a civil suit. And that suit is being filed on behalf of the brother of Austin Simon, the attacker in this situation. And honestly, you have to read the excerpts to believe them. And of course, this is going to go through. It's going to cost everybody a bunch of money and maybe will result in this person actually getting a settlement due to the fact that his brother attacked a 61 year old man because his girlfriend was mad about not having enough money on her benefits card to cover a three dollar transaction but the way that they tell it is a little bit different get a load of these quotes i just gotta read them for you so you can understand where the state of our american legal system is at this moment according to the suit austin was killed due to negligence in ownership security hiring of employees, retention of employees, training of employees, and management of your premises.
nemesis. Yes, you heard that right. It turns out that the reason Austin Simon was killed was not because his girlfriend has an anger problem, was not because he has an anger problem, was not because he's a violent criminal who has committed violent criminals before this and was committing a violent crime at this time. It's because the store didn't have adequate security measures to prevent people like Austin Simon, the violent criminal, from committing violent crimes against their store employees. On top of that, they clearly hired the wrong employees. Jose Alba, 61 years old. Austin Simon was trying to beat up this old man. Maybe if he was six foot eight, built like LeBron James, a super athlete, he would have felt too intimidated to attack him, and therefore this whole situation would have been prevented. On top of that, there's also poor training of the employees. You see, Alba's employer did not give him the lecture on how he is morally obligated to take the beating from a criminal behind the counter, even though he's obviously physically disadvantaged. And if he is going to fight back, he can only fight back on one-on-one -on -one single combat options with somebody who is much larger than him physically and thus take the beating in that scenario. All this nonsense about defending yourself, that obviously should have been ruled out day one of employee training. However, it wasn't. Therefore, therefore, the store is liable for Jose Alba's completely out of the question actions in this situation. Now, because this store, the Blue Moon Deli in Hamilton Heights, was not expecting a situation like this because they're a small business, they actually didn't have insurance to cover this situation. They have since gotten that insurance. However, they weren't covered at the time, so the store owner feels like he's going to be wiped out by this lawsuit. And to make matters even worse, the store owner actually put everything he had into this small business. He borrowed money, so he's currently in debt, and now he's going to have to fight off a lawsuit that even if he wins, by the way, could ultimately lead to him being bankrupt. This is a shakedown. This is another criminal activity from another member of the criminal Simon family, and they're trying to extort money out of this store based on the fact that a member of their family went to attack somebody in a totally unjustified manner, and unfortunately, this suit is likely to progress, and unfortunately, it's likely to bankrupt the store owner, showing that the criminals win even if they don't even win the lawsuit because we don't have a loser pay system. On top of that, Jose Alba, who actually actually left the United States of America, a country he's lived in for decades, a country that he became a citizen of over 15 years ago to the Dominican Republic, is actually afraid that this lawsuit will eventually be attached to him. And he should be. This is a shakedown. This is a greedy attorney teaming up with a family member that is trying to profit off of their family member's crime. And of course, Jose Alba is also on the hook for this whole situation. Now look, it appears that the New York City Bodega Association is standing behind the store. They're standing behind Alba. They're calling this a shakedown. They're pointing out all the problems with this suit as they've been this whole entire way. But the thing is, whenever you're in a situation where you don't have adequate self-defense laws and you're released only due to the fact that the district attorney faced a ton of political pressure from all sides, you are always vulnerable to predatory civil lawsuits like this one. So while I might find it repugnant that somebody could file a lawsuit because a member of their family started a fight, attacked an elderly man, that elderly man defended himself against that attack, and now they're claiming wrongful death, I understand that this is a likely outcome. This is one of the reasons why when the charges were dropped due to political pressure, I wasn't one of those people that were celebrating 100% because I knew that unless you have laws that specifically protect people in self-defense situations from not just criminal but civil liability, that this was going to happen because this is the reason that many states have those laws in the first place because of these wrongful death lawsuits. So yeah, we're probably going to see a small business destroyed. Remember how I talked talked about how businesses get destroyed by crime multiple times on this channel and people still deny it. This is a unique way of doing it, but it is happening as we speak. And it's unfortunate. It's horrible. If there was any way to support the legal effort to fight back against David Simon so he doesn't get a dime in a settlement based on the criminality of his brother, then I'm on board for that. But the thing is, they're likely going to lose a ton of money trying to fight this. So we might end up seeing a settlement. And I guess that really does prove that crime does pay, at least in the city of New York. Anyway, that's all I really have for you guys today. I apologize for the depressing nature of this story, but the news is the news. Update 
updates are the updates, and unfortunately, we cover a ton of crime, and we are in a very pro-criminal atmosphere right now, so all of the stories are going to be pretty depressing. But if you like this video, you can show it by leaving a like, so if you like depression, hit like on the video. Subscribe for more content, follow me on all my social media, support me via the support links. This has been me talking about Jose Alba's business, or the Blue Moon Deli, which was involved in the Jose Alba case, getting sued. Till next time.